would like to ask our first presenter, Sally Ann Rainey, Rainey, to begin the session with her image. Is this on? So this image, to me, when I was asked about providing an image, and I didn't even think about an image, it was immediately this one. This is my relationship with God and with the earth. Before I say anything else, I want to thank the Sianje family for your intention and uh, for, for the gratitude that you have expressed to all of us for being here. Our gratitude to you. Thank you. So I was asked to tell a story, and, um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that because um, I have so many notes from what other people had said that um, I was confusing myself. <laughs> so nature to me is a gateway. It's the creation and the creator. And when I was seven years old, uh, I, I was, um, my family were Methodists, which meant nothing to me, but I could tell people we were, that's what we were. And I was in Bible school in the Methodist church, and they were talking about a particular Bible story, Samson and Delilah, and an impulse came through me, and I stood up, closed the book, told the teacher he wasn't the Bible teacher, he was not telling the truth. Uh, I had to leave, and I wasn't coming back. And I walked out the door with my little Bible book that I still have. And I realized, as I was walking home, which is only about a block away, what I had actually done. It wasn't until my mother caught up with me, they got her out of the congregation, she caught up with me, and she came up behind me, and she said, stop, and I stopped. And she turned me around, and she stooped down, and she looked into my eyes. She didn't look down at me. And she said, I understand you walked out of Sunday school today, and you told your teacher, basically, that he was a liar. I said, well, sort of, yeah, I did that. She said, well, if you don't want to be in Sunday school, where do you want to be? And out of the mouths of babes, I said, with God. And she said, well, where would that be? And I said, it's over there. And over there was a field with knee-high grass and these huge, huge old cottonwood trees, the trunk this big around. And there were frogs, and there were birds, and there were insects. And I'd watch the worms go through the sand and make designs. And I'd lie there, and I'd look at the clouds, and I'd look at the sun filtering through the canopy of the trees. And then I started to notice patterns. I started to notice the balance of fragility and resilience. I started to know that nature, undisturbed, is balanced. And I had a particular affinity for trees, I still do, uh, because of this experience, and I've been able to meet some of the oldest sentinels still on the planet. I've been blessed with that experience. And there was one of these cottonwoods that had a cavity in her trunk, and it was just big enough for me to crawl in and snuggle up and take naps. And one day I got the idea that I would put my ear to her skin because I wanted to hear her grow. And about six months later, not knowing anything about meditation, an impulse came and said, put your back straight against the trunk, close your eyes, fold your legs, and I did, and I sat there. And in about 15 minutes, I felt the sap of that tree go up my spine and then go back down into the earth and back again. And I realized there was no separation. There was no hard edge between the trunk 
of that tree and me, we were one. The frequency matched. And so from that experience, I realized, having spent about three years in that field, many days of the week, I realized a few things, very key things that have guided my life. And one is, is that the master impulse of the universe is cooperation, not competition. I also realized that I was born in the womb of creation, just as the stars were born, just as the tree that I loved was born, just as all those insects and birds were born. I realized that I was the creation and the creator. And I also realized that I was not separate from anything, that separateness is, is individuated consciousness. And one is unconditional undifferentiated consciousness. And I was one. There was no I. That's just the convenience of language. There was only one. And so I progressed through life. In that moment, I realized later on that I was a God seed. That's where the divine spark in me was lit was ignited. And I didn't know that until years later. So I've spent my life trying to protect biodiversity around the planet and put it into conservation custody for perpetuity. And then I realized that climate change changed everything. New rules, totally new rules. And that everything, all human systems and all natural systems were becoming subservient to and would be subservient to climate change. So in concluding, I want to say that climate change has invited us, we created it out of false assumptions of separateness, fear, scarcity. And so we created it. And we can change those assumptions, which change the paradigm, which change the belief systems, which change the language and the narrative, which changes how we think and how we act, how we behave. So, is, so I had to come to terms with climate change. And I think what it is, it's an invitation from ourselves to ourselves because we're at a crossroads, both on the physical plane of our life support systems and where we are at that intersection. There's a spiritual path, and there's the road of staying in the trance. So I think my experience has been that nature is the gateway, and nature has all the designs that we need that's where many of the answers reside. Thank you.